hello so hello everyone and welcome to our next session of libraries so it is a continuation what we had stopped yesterday about the libraries so we'll have a quick re recap that we got introduced to the concept of library so what a library is so library is nothing but a concept where we are connecting to a physical path so that all the SAS files which are saved into a particular path gets connected into SAS and that path we refer it as a library. That path when we are referring into SAS, instead of writing the whole path, we refer it with a specific name. So we give the name as libref and for that we use the statement of libname, right? So we use the statement like libname libref in quotation marks we gave the path and we ended the statement so with our example we got connected to our base sas library so base is an engine it's nothing but the basic software type of data files like because it's a sas software data sets though and we are working into sas environment so that software which we are using of programming is a base sas software hence the engine is base correct then we know that when we are working into sas by default sas provides us two libraries one is the permanent and one is the temporary correct i hope you all can hear me yes ashwini okay so jagruti please adjust the voice uh, adjustment or check your microphone uh, i hope uh, others are all able to hear me it's a issue from your end one sec i'll just check with her so we were discussing about the uh, sas provides us by default whenever you start the session it provides us two libraries one is the permanent and one is the temporary so temporary is a work library why it's called temporary because any files which we save into the reference with this library it is going to store in this library only for that particular session once the session ends the data which we have saved into this library is deleted whereas sas help, sas help library is one of the permanent library which is provided by sas environment with pre-existing data files apart from it we also got introduced one can create the user defined or our own permanent libraries by using libname statement right then if you are creating any data file and you want to save it temporarily you can always refer it with two levels as data set name with reference as it work dot and a data file name or else you can simply give the data file name so this is equivalent both of it so it's understood that sas is saving with only the data file name this is it's referencing the work library so this both way of referencing the temporary files is equivalent right and this is one of the permanent libraries correct so which is already pre-existing you uh you can read this library you can also save a particular file in this library all right apart from this in the session you are aware that there are other permanent libraries but we do not have read and write access so that is with respect to the administrator job or uh, administrator role which plays to give which user needs to provide which libraries read and write access rights all right so apart from this you had also worked with some demonstration with respect to libraries so now let's move ahead how one can connect to non sas files now we are all familiar that when we are working into sas environment and we have certain sas files with us correct so all those files you know we have with us in our data data folder so within data folder you people have all observed that we do have non sas files also so this files with an extension of dot ss7b dat are sas files whereas we do have certain files like dot csv dot xls correct so how we are going to read these files 
because these files are non sas engine or non sas software files now when we want to connect sas files you know we have by default you know we have created a libnim um, code file you know so we are going to connect this libnim every time whenever we start start our session so what is happening with this lib name only those files with an extension of dot sas 7 b that is going to be saved into or gets connected into sas environment with reference to this pg1 as a name but the path it's getting connected is this so actually this is your physical path where you have all the files of same engine or of same software or same type so this path is actually a library and this path we refer in sas is with this name okay so within this pg1 all these files which we refer are sas files so you never find any of these files where we had seen do we have this excel file do we have this csv file do we have this europe sport trade excel file so when you see your library do you see any europe trade excel see you cannot see europe trade correct you will yeah. not see why because that is a file which is non sas file so the library created is only for the sas files so what if i want to refer or i want to read a non excel file which is suppose europe sport trade file okay so this is an excel file i when i double click this i won't be able to open it into my sas environment because it's a non sas file correct so it is telling you need to import so in instead of importing we can also connect it because it's telling it's having the same location as your data folder but within this data folder the file name and the source of the file is dot xlsx so this is what the path is correct so how i'll work on this so i can make use of the same concept which we have learned where we have we were connecting to the sas files via libname okay so i'll be writing this libname statement so i'll write libname i want a library reference to be created for european trade data so i write eu see to it that your library reference name is not more than eight characters long okay and i provide the path along with its extension okay so before ending it's pretty much important telling sas that what engine file it is because it's not a sas file so by default it's not a base sas engine because it's not a sas software file see you will get an error so it's telling library eu is not a valid format to access the method so it's telling an error for libname statement so you need to provide the engine so after providing libref it's better to give an engine for it so engine you can tell is excel sx see it's highlighted in blue now when i execute this so it's telling it is successfully created so let's check the library with a name eu been created yes so i get sheet one so what is this sheet one in eu because if you have observed your data files okay so we have this data files with us correct so this is on external path correct wherever the drive is so if you find see this is eu sports trade was it the same file which we are accessing xls eu trade sports trade yes mm. Yes, so this is an Excel file. See, when I try to open this, it opens as an Excel workbook. And we know in Excel, the information is always saved in different sheets. So this name of the sheet as sheet one is typically one of the data within your 
EU file, correct? Or EU library. So this is one table as a sheet which you see into EU library. Getting it? So this is how you could see that I'm. We are trying to read a non-SAS file which is like Excel, and we are connected into SAS. So for a particular Excel workbook. If you have multiple sheets, all those sheets will be read as an individual table into this library, and you can view this table. So, if you want to see another example, like for example, we have NP Info. Now, this NP Info is an another non-SAS file which is an opens into an Excel. So, this I'm doing in doing it outside my SAS Studio. So, do we have this NP opened? Yes, so if you see NP, do you see at the bottom there are three sheets in NP? Everyone? Yes, I see parks, species. Yes, so you see parks, species, visits, correct? So this yeah. is the data for different requirements but saved into a single workbook as a different sheets, correct? So what we are going to do into SAS is if we want to access this information into SAS, so you can always make use of your libname statement. So just pay attention how it works now. So I may write it that it's an NP libref. And here I give the name for it as NP info. So the file is NP underscore info. And if it's the same, yes, it's dot XLS file. Now pay attention. I'm executing this libname statement. So it's telling NP is successfully assigned and NP libref is path for its physical path is this. So let's check the library NP. So see within this NP library, do you see park species visits? Yes. yes. So what are this? It's actually That's those sheet. individual sheet. sheets. Absolutely correct. So this individual sheets with a specific data reference or data files within it refer in SAS as if those are tables within a library NP. Got it now, everyone? Yes. Correct, yeah. but this is currently still an Excel environment or an Excel uh, um, library. It's not a SAS tables, park, species, visits. These are not SAS tables. So in case if you want to work into SAS environment, either you can create a data set telling parks. It should be read. So I use the input source read from a set statement, which is a keyword, you know, to give the input source name of the data file. So it's from which library? See, it's from the NP library. So from NP library, which file we are going to read? It's a uh, input, yes, parks, and I simply run it. So you know, if I write this data step, it will simply copy all the columns and rows into this new data file. So it's a mirror image from your input data to your output data. But now what are we doing? We are copying this information from a NP library, which is getting saved into SAS environment, and we are creating a SAS file. So here it was still a non-SAS file. Why? Because this NP library is not a SAS library. It's a Excel library. So it's a non-SAS file. I'm converting into a SAS file, which is currently getting saved into work library temporarily. Correct? So see, it's telling it has imported the data, which has 56 observations and six variables. So there were 56 observations read from the data np.parks and a data set. See, see the conversion? So now the keyword is coming data set. Earlier, it is telling importing data. So it's telling a data set named work.parks has 56 observations and six variables. And hence, a final note telling a data statement used. So now when I go and check my work library, now look at it, it is showing me it's a data file or it is the engine, or if you see its proc contents, it will tell you that it is a SAS file. Are you getting the difference what we are doing here? Uh, yes, Ashwini. It's so from a, yes. very neat. 
yeah so yeah from a non sas library and a non sas file we are creating a sas file correct and once this sas file is created you can do any procedure so you can write proc means data equal to parks okay so run so simply i am giving one example so later on you can always work on this what is your late uh, requirement for the business requirement for generating the report and you can just use it okay so i have i have spell check for me yes p a r k okay so yeah. this is how it works now so it's generating a means report for all the numeric variables from this data file all right so by default in means report these are the statistics n mean which is a statistical term for average standard deviation by default statistics minimum value and maximum value from this numeric columns okay so this is where i've generated the report the task is over by reading from excel uh, which is a non uh, sas file now i do not want the connection with sas anymore so i can simply disassociate the connection so i write lib name give the libref and i write clear correct now i can dissociate the connection so in case if i again need this park data you know this park data is available for us in work library so you can always rework on this data file as a sas file from the work library and you disconnect from the current connections so it's always a better habit after reading a non excel non sas file you have worked with that file you have converted that file into a sas file you dissociate from the connection or you disassign yourself with the physical path for that particular engine all right so this is how it's all the concept that how one can connect to a non sas files all right any doubts any questions on this area ashwini i have a doubt yeah so if uh, np and eu are the, are they the temporary libraries or are you creating it Uh, it's, as a it's, permanent see permanent what is the concept of permanent that it is available for us throughout this session and permanent is a user defined library which we are creating and library as i said is a concept with a physical path so path is permanent correct yep so it's actually a permanent library but you refer it np and it, this path is actually a permanent so whatever you access from this path is no more going to be deleted correct so this is already there in this folder so it's there we do have this np so it's there in this folder okay uh, okay so this path is actually the concept is library and this path we refer in sas is with this nickname okay got it so it's a user defined permanent library user defined it's we we are defining because okay. in case in, in case if i have created this into one of my permanent libraries suppose i refer this to pg okay i give the name as parks one and i write, refer it to be saved in pg one all right so pay attention i i have already connected to pg one right so check your log what message is telling me now <clears throat> okay because i have dissociated with it it's telling i cannot read it because i have no np library so i need to again reconnect so see what i am doing actually i'm simply reconnecting the path so that path is a library the name is just any name which you can give are you getting it what i'm trying to tell you padma yeah 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 so do not get confused with the library reference name because it's just a name for the path you because you cannot every time uh, remember the path or by heart the path when you're writing a program see what has happened did it create this data file in pg1 see it's telling it's creating now so what is pg1 pg1 is nothing but a reference for our data folder 
Agreed? Yeah. So when I refresh my data folder here and I check for my parks one data. So let we let us check it here. See? Do you see this? Yeah. So in case now I move back to one of my libnames and I dissociate to this libname connection. So I am currently the connection which I have made from the physical part into SAS environment, I have dissociated that connection. But the path which I have used in this program to create a data file, which should be saved in this path. So what was this path? Your data path. I should have this table. So when if I again refer or ref, uh, refresh this, I'll still find that table in this path. See? So don't you think that when I have connected this lib name for this path, which is only referenced by this name, is actually this path a library? Yeah. Getting it now? Yep. Everyone? Yes, Ashwini. Yes, Ashwini. Great. Uh, can we give also our uh, desktop path, like C drive or D drive? See, yeah. currently we are working on a SaaS software, which is a cloud application. So okay. because it's a cloud application, we have got all these files into cloud path. Okay. So you need to refer these files into your SaaS studio through a cloud path. This is a software which is not your installed software on your system, which is using your system uh, operating environment. So we have to uh, upload all the files here and then we can- Absolutely, work. absolutely. Okay. Because in case if we were using with SAS a Windows application of programming environment like uh, SAS 9.4 or EG a tool, then you would have given your drive path. So let that okay. drive path could be your personal drive or your desktop drive or any drive. So that will that is the same concept here. Only difference is your files you have uploaded in a cloud Upload. application. Because okay. it's a cloud application, you have to give this path of the cloud environment. Okay. Got it? Yes. yes Ashwini. Others, I hope this concept is clear. Yes, Ashwini. Yes, Ashwini. Great. Let's move ahead with the slides. So we are going to read the files which are in Excel. So using a library to read Excel files. So we are going to use the same concept of libname, give libref. You need to provide the engine name for a non sas file. Give the path along with that file and its extension. So this engine here is XLSX. This is for your Excel files. So your path must include the complete file name along with its extension. It's not only the location, but within the location, what is the file along with its location? So this is what the example. So Monica, this is where your question answers. So this example on the slide is actually connecting to a physical drive, which is on the PC. Okay. Because I was also giving the training for SAS windowing environment, which is a desktop installation software. So we were using this part. But because we are using SaaS environment, which is a cloud application, we cannot use a physical path like this. We need to provide a cloud internal physical path. Getting it? Understood now? Yes, Ashwin. Okay. So XLSX engine requires, see, license 
to access the PC files. So whenever we have this desktop softwares like SAS 9.4 Windows application or EG environment, by default, when the software gets installed, it has internally the software which connects to non SAS files through a software called as SAS access. So whenever you are connecting a non SAS files at the back end, make a note it always use SAS access engine to connect the non SAS files. Okay, so which engine it uses or which software it uses at the back end to connect the non SAS files, SAS access. All right, everyone. So this is what it's telling. So it uses a software of non SAS file to get connected into SAS environment to read it successfully. It uses SAS access to interface or connect with your PC files. Okay. All right. Now, looking into this, understand what it's trying to tell that if you have observed this, it's an Excel worksheet, for example, look at the column names. How is the column names? Don't you see space. space? So as per the SAS naming conventions for column, does SAS entertain the column names with space? No, no. it should be like underscore or something. Correct. So it should not give or uh, we should not have any special signs or space. So that is why it's showing it's by default coming with underscore. So what it's trying to tell is that when we are accessing, so for example, we have some of the columns, your it's already having underscore. How about your now, your space, do we have any column with space here? No. Species, no space. Parks, yo. Park code is having a space. Okay. So now let's reconnect here to our SAS NP files or NP library. So let me check this. or parks. So by default, what is happening in SAS or in SAS studio, it is a default setting that it is entertaining this column names with space. Okay. Normally with SAS 9.4 and enterprise guide, this space is not been entertained. So it, it sometimes reads it without the space but in case you want to have this space to be converted into underscore okay you can before connecting to this library you need to give the instructions by using this options so this is one of the global statement called options and you give the options called as valid variable which is a short form for variable var name is equal to and you provide the engine so see currently it is by default for sas studio it is using any but if you write v7 or v9 so what is it as per the version of your sas engine v9 the columns in an excel files which has spaces are default converted that spaces into underscore okay so that's what it happens here now so let's check whether it's doing it the same thing. If it's not doing, that means it's default setting with SAS Studio where the columns can entertain the spaces. So it is, see, so it is actually a default setting. Okay. So in case if I do not write V7 and I write any, let's check. Any, it's by default for this. So any is entertaining with the space. Okay, so it's default with your SAS environment of studio. Do we have anything like this? No. Fine. So let's check. So instead of space, can we give the underscore if we want to give uh, the no, no, no. If you want a default underscore coming, you should write this. It will take the columns like this. Okay, so, so see what it's telling, it forces table and column names to follow SAS naming conventions. And we know 
libname libref clear is to just disconnect the connection from Excel environment and SAS session. Okay, so when you check the proc contents, you know what proc contents do. It will give you the contents for your SAS tables or this Excel tables. So for our example, within this library, we have parks. So now I already have this. So I can write proc contents. I'm using it as if it's a SAS file. Correct data equal to NP dot parks. And I use run. So when I execute this as if it's a SAS file, I refer with two level SAS data set name. So it will still process and it will see give me the pro contents. But here do, do what is the report? It's coming into two forms. Correct only two tables earlier when we were doing proc contents for a SAS files you remember it was giving three table information in the report i hope you are able to understand what i'm trying to tell you people yes it was three, like sorted correct. by you know. no it was giving three table information one was oh. the general data information then in between we used to have engine host information and last we were getting alphabetic list of observation. Now, if you observe this general information of data file, see it's telling the data set name is np.parks. See it's member type it's data, but engine is XLS. It's not engine V9. Are you getting the difference? Yeah, yeah. So this is what it's telling it's a engine which is excel file it's not a sas file that is why it's not giving any observation numbers it is telling how many columns it has okay and it's not giving engine host information why there is no engine host information because this file is a non sas file are you getting it therefore there is no engine host information it's only the alphabetic list of its variables are you mm -hmm. getting it now yeah Yes, Sasha. Yes. So this is what it's telling about the contents. And you have a demo. So just open this demonstration P10D02. So it is into demo P1 lesson 2 D02. Just follow, try to connect all this and follow this instructions and work on this. Go ahead and work on this. Yeah, it's done as well. Done. So do yeah. you find that the columns now will not have in SAS the spaces? Did you check? Yes, Ashwin. Or it's entertaining the spaces? Whatever you might have given. You can write valid var name is equal to v7 or v9 both are valid okay v7 is since version 7 and v9 is the recent version okay so for storm summary you have this data from your studio so you have storm excel okay so is it storm excel yes so take its path Right. So if I simply connect this along with my option, it will create a library of Excel storm. Ah, uh, there's no engine I have provided. So I need to give Excel as X engine. Check my library, Excel storm. And within it, all my Excel sheets are into this library as if it's a table. So if I check which is the table or which worksheet consists the spaces. Storm summary. First one. So this storm, storm summary. summary. Oh. So 
see now did it come along with underscore sign so it's following your sas naming conventions of columns yes yes so if you check your log as well so it's not that fine mostly it gives the message all right so this was along with your excel now let's check the contents for it so what contents how you'll write the contents what is the libref here for storm summary excel storm dot absolutely excel storm dot give the name storm underscore summary see the proc contents as if it's a sas file you refer it with an excel library there is a spell check maybe and stop see do we get engine host information here no why because it's not a sas file it's an excel file so let's check log proc content successfully used so this is where we have worked with this storm correct so it's telling highlight option lib name statement and run the selected code that we have done so you find this columns are coming with underscore so modify your proc content statements to read the storm summary table in storm and that we had done add a statement to clear the connection so how you will clear this connection after this connect lib name xls storm clear agreed yes yes sir Ashmi, my column name showing some space. It's, it's because, different. Uh, one sec, one sec. Mm -hmm. It's because by default, as I said you, SAS Studio is having a default setting with entertaining the column names with space. Okay, okay. Show, just share your share your screen. Can you see? Yes. One sec. Give me the access. One sec. Close this window. <laughs> Done? Yes. Okay. So on the left side, it's having space. So it is coming space. It's because by default setting is here you have any right earlier but because it's a default setting it is having entertaining the space so let's reconnect again valid warning equal to let's check whether it's still coming with it refresh now it's coming see no because this need to re execute properly yeah because yes. default in sas studio it entertains the spaces because the default studio is any in sas studio the setting is to reading with the column names for external data with column spaces hence it was coming with space but if you want it with underscore, you can change it by writing options valid var name equal to version v7. Oh, okay. Okay. So yes. this type of question they may ask you in your uh, interview as well as if you are uh, planning to give your online certification exams with SAS, they may ask these questions about what is valid var name equal to option. Okay. Yes. All right. So you can stop. Yes, you can stop, stop sharing. Yes, yes. Okay. So in case if you have observed the same thing in your studio or for reading it through PDF, you'll find the explanation about any.
see it's telling in SAS Studio and Enterprise Guide valid var name option is set to any by default. So any any enables column names to contain special characters, including spaces. If a column name contains special characters, the column name must be expressed as SAS name literal. So it it's telling that in case there are any special signs in the column names of Excel, while you are using the same columns or a data name into your SAS environment, you need to provide a val uh, your name along with this N. Okay, it, it tells N means, please take care of any special sign within this name. So N is called as N literal. Okay. Ashwin, you can see your screen. Oh, you screen. cannot see my screen. No. So you can open your page because I had stopped sharing with uh, Anna uh, when it was with Monica. No? So you can open your PDF book on the page 2-21. So it's giving this explanation. 2-21 so you can just go through it so see it's telling in SAS studio and enterprise guide its default setting is valid var name option as any so it can entertain special characters including spaces so in case any column has special signs apart from space that column can be written into quotation and you give n N means N literal. That means the column name contains a special sign like either you have given hyphen or you have given star or you have given slash. So that is the special sign should be entertained in SAS. So that column name should be telling that it has a special sign giving N literal. Okay, that's it. Nothing else into it. So this is the way it should refer. So this is what is the information for you to be read valid var name set to seven if you want it throughout the session to be active use option statement valid var equal to seven all right so this is where it was same thing what we have seen on slides only i wanted to highlight on the extra reading part which they have asked you to read through pdf all fine people Yes, yeah, so far so good. Great. Okay, so let's come to this activity. Open P102A07 activity. If necessary, update the path of course files in libname statement. Yes, you will have to update because we are working into SAS Studio. The path is different for individual of us. Complete your PROC content steps to read the PARCS table in NP library. Run the program. Navigate to your list of libraries and expand NP library. Confirm that the three tables include PARCS species and visit. Examine log. Which column names are modified to follow SAS naming conventions? Comment the final libname statement. Uncomment and clear the connections. So simple one. Same thing I had shown you earlier. Just work on it so it's activity number a07 for lesson two everyone work on this individually
done Ashwin. Great. So check the column names in each table. Yeah, yeah it's a space in between okay so in parks we had seen earlier it was coming space but you can check other tables in case it's having column names with underscore see if you see species the column names are coming with underscore yes see so on this species you can always write proc contents See, I'm checking the proc contents for species. Okay. So let's check log for this. All right. So if you see this table for NP dot species, the columns are having underscore now. All right. Yes. That's it. So you can dissociate the connection from the library. How you will dissociate it? Simply library. write library lib name, name and clear. Correct. Lib name, lib ref, clear. Clear. Yeah. So it's always a best practice. If it's a non SAS file library, once your task is over with respect to that particular lib ref, just dissociate it. Okay. Yes. So most of the time you may see whenever you see the contents, it tells that the column names of the variables are now looking like this. If you could see with proc contents in log, it's good. If it's not seen, it's all fine because by default, the settings for studio is valid var name equal to any. That's why it may not come, but it should come in case if you have used it. Sometimes it may not come, sometimes it comes. So don't worry on. Okay. All right. So let's move ahead with the next topic, which is importing data into SAS. Okay, so let's see now you were actually reading the non excel files into sas via libname so there is another technique or another process where you can also import that table directly into sas and that's what we are going to learn is importing data into sas so in this you can import a non or unstructured data file as well so unstructured data file can be imported to create a structured data file all right so we'll see this procedure of import where you are going to access an unstructured data file to convert it into structured data file. So to import, this is your syntax. You use a procedure, it's called proc import data file equal to, you give the file path along with the name and its extension. You need to provide what its database management system is output so what is it okay so i would just like to give you an information that we do have certain files which are comma separated files so this comma separated files like mp traffic they by default get opens into excel but ideally if i try to open it into notepad you'll find the values are separated by comma okay so here it's showing like this but most of the time this np which is a comma separated file Okay, even if this storm damage, if you try to open this, 
okay it is why it is called comma separated because the values gets open or values are separated by comma that's why it's called as comma separated value see fine so there are the values which are separated by comma are you getting it so this type of files always default open into excel hence those are csv so when they are comma separated as i showed you currently it when i when i try to open it into notepad the values are separated in comma this type of files are unstructured files are you all with me yes ashwini yes ashwini okay yeah. so this is unstructured yes. file because there is no proper structure this is simply a data information do you understand from this data what is this columns what is stands no. this value stands for uh, it's correct yes no, so it's it. it's yeah it's un unreadable it's yeah. un understandable so this comma separated values gets always open with excel so if i try to open in excel it actually looks like this okay so though it's a csv file but it is an unstructured file default the csv file always opens into excel file okay so we are going to see how to read an unstructured file into sas so for that when i move into it in my sas environment i can import directly because i cannot write a libname statement on unstructured data file so i can use a procedure called as proc import now what this proc import does it is actually import means you take in so it's a procedure to import or read data from see it's telling here from an external data source and writes into a sas data set so what we are doing we are importing into base sas a delimited file delimited means any value separated by any special signs okay which is called as unstructured data file this so why we call it as delimiting file because the values are separated by special signs and the special signs sas cannot read it automatically it limits it hence it's called as delimited files okay all right so i can write proc import i write data file equal to i give the path okay so what is the path and which file we are going to read it's a csv file so this csv file is which file which file storm it is damage. storm, storm damage. damage yes storm damage so it is storm damage see it's csv i give its properties i copy this path i put it into this fine so this proc import never ends the statement here you need to provide that what type of file it is so this file is csv so we need to tell its database management system it's called dbms database management system it is a csv file see the options okay it's yes. a csv file okay and i need to tell that i am going to read this unstructured file from this path whose database management is csv and i want to create a sas file out of it so i need to write output equal to or i simply write out equal to see this becomes blue and i can refer it to any if i want to save it into permanent library i can refer any libraries or i can simply write that it can be saved into my work library i simply give the same name but it will be saved into work library hence this i can end it with run fine now let's execute so as per your syntax see proc import data file equal to data file equal to it's not data equal to okay it's a external path hence i write data file equal to the file name along with its extension dbms out equal to give the output data set name okay it will be converting this non sas file into sas file so now i am creating it so let's execute so see it's telling work dot storm damage created with so many rows and so many columns let's check your log so what it's telling we have executed your 
proc import statement okay or proc import step so with this proc import at the back end is using all this process to read an external file so it's telling it read an external file with this path the file path it's telling and it see the keyword it's telling 38 records were read from this raw file minimum record length is so much maximum record length is so much and see the conversion a data set work dot storm time is damage was created see the conversion keyword it's telling observations it's no more records and it's telling variables it's no more columns so records indicates it's an raw file observations indicates it's a sas data set are you getting it now so moving back into my libraries let's check in my work library whether i have this data set storm damage so this is actually a data set all right now so if i check the contents for this data set how i'll write the contents i need to give which procedure to see the contents yes proc content proc content contents. absolutely proc correct contents. proc data contents data absolutely data equal to i can to simply write yeah. storm underscore damage. Damage. damage so if you want you can write work dot but it is understood by sas it is equivalent if i do not write libref here equivalent it is work library now see you get three parts one is the general information of data second see engine host information and third part is alphabetic list of variables so this engine host information comes only when it is a sas data file so it's engine see the number v9. of variables yeah v9 indicates it's a sas file now right, yeah. correct variables engine host information so because it's a sas file it's telling by default, SAS data set saves the data in the form of pages. So it takes one page. Why? Because the number of observations are very low, which is 38. Maximum page, it can give this page size. Because of number of observations and columns, it takes only one page, right? So it's telling one page can save maximum so many observations and so on. And then it's giving alphabetic list of columns. So this is where we have written a program where we have imported an unstructured file to convert it into a sas file by using import procedure all right everyone yeah. okay now in case i am re-executing the same step do you think it will again create a data file for me by importing So what it is telling, see, import cancel. cancel. Why? Because it's telling output data set work damage already exists. Already exists. But if case, if you want to re-execute, why? Because you might have got an information when you're working on this file that this data has got updated with new rows. Are you getting it? Yeah. So in that case, you need to re-execute this proc import so that your data set will have this new rows added. Okay, so you are trying to re-execute this proc import, but it failed. So in case if you want to re-execute, but it's telling it's already existing. So it's also giving a hint, specify replace option to overwrite it. But currently it stopped working. So in case you want the updated values to be updated in this, you can always write an statement called as replace. So it's one of the options. So this option, you need to write it along with this other options of this proc import. Why I'm telling these are options? Because your proc import statement is starting from here. This is, it's all required options and it's ending with semicolon along with DBMS out replace. So now when I re-execute this with replace, my data will get executed or I'll have the new data with the updated values. And hence, replace is most of the time used when you want the updates to be applied for your new data values. Getting it, everyone? Yes. yes. Okay. So this was about import. Moving ahead, 
so see it's telling comma separated or comma delimited that is comma separated files so you use this replace option so replace the output table if it exists in case you get the updated information yes you have another options in proc import called as guess in rows the values is n or max that means if you are reading any external file by importing it you can always ask sas to remit the number of rows to be read so it's telling specifies the number of rows used to determine column type and length default it is 20 you can use max that means read all the maximum rows so either you can give the number of rows is n either a specific number but in case if you do not write any by default it is 20 all right everyone so in case if you again write this guess in rows okay spell guess in guessing it's guessing guessing rows okay so it's independent see it's an independent statement is equal to so how many rows currently in this data set you are getting is 38 so in case if you write let's check out So it's reading all because it's not a huge table so there is no limitation for this hence this guessing rows is not working but this is one of the option one can always use in case you want to read to a specific rows okay so that's what is telling specific number of rows used to determine common type column type and length so default is 20. so this is just an extra input it's a statement along with your proc import okay it's not an option it's a statement why because it's starting with the keyword ending with a semicolon it's an independent statement in proc import and thus you have this demo so just open this demonstration d03 for lesson 2 p1 lesson 2 d03 So it's telling complete your proc import step to read storm damage.csv data. Create a temporary data set, storm damage import. Replace if it already exists. So it's the same thing which I had showed. that so this should be your program
dan still working on it Ashwin. okay Danashun. Okay, so I hope you have the same steps written. Anamika Jagruti, I hope you both are understanding and following what we are learning today. Yes, I am following Ashwini, but I'm taking I'm going with my slow pace, so I'm doing it slowly. But yes, no I'm problem. understanding Ashwini. Yeah, yeah. but post class. Whenever you get time, I would request you to please revise. So this will help you to gear up. Totally, totally. Okay. I actually, yeah, I actually, as soon as the meeting gets over, I revise myself. So great. yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. How about yeah. Anamika? I hope you are following, dear. Yes, ma'am. I'm a little bit slow, but I'm following. Great. So I hope you have done with this demo, both of you, Jagruti, Anamika. Uh, yeah. yeah, I did it halfway. Doing the path. Yeah, writing the path. Okay. Padma? Ma'am, uh, can I yes, say? Yes, Have you done with this? I hope you have yes. the same um, steps. Yeah, yes, Ashwini. I'm okay. done. Okay, great. So there was someone who was asking me something. It is Jagruti or Namika? Uh, Ma'am, it's me. Me means? Ma'am, Anamika. Anamika, I... yeah. Tell me, Anamika. Mm. Yes, Anamika. Uh, I'm can you share my screen? One sec. Yes. Yes. Yes, Anamika. Ma'am, it's not uh, coming it's, in. It's because right? it's because if you have observed this syntax, look at the syntax before this demo comment. Where is the semicolon and where you are giving the semicolon? So a proc import statement yes. never ends with semicolon. Oh yeah. Yes. Now I'm getting. Now execute this. Yeah. Got it? Look at a log. See, it's telling proc import is successfully done. It's creating a data set. Yeah. Right? Yes. Okay. Thank Apart you. from this, any other question? Uh, no, ma'am. All right. So you can stop sharing. Yeah. Okay. Jagruti, have you done? Uh, I just finished copying the path, but I haven't uh, like you know executed the whole program. I mean, I haven't finished writing. Okay, so you can do it later. No problem. Yeah. Okay. 
So Thanks. open this activity A08, everyone. So it's telling you're going to read a tab file. So you're going to read a tab file. So see it's DBMS, you're writing DAB and you're giving this name. So it's telling run the program twice, carefully read the log. What is a different about the second submission? Fix the program and rerun it. It's very simple. Reading it only, you will be able to answer. Yes. yes. Sir. So yes, as per this statement, what they are trying to tell you. So what is required if it is already existing, resubmitting, what it is telling you the error on resubmission. Yes. People. Uh, that replace option. Absolutely correct. So once you write the replaced option, the things gets resolved. Correct? Everyone. Yes. So it's telling yes. it's a note. It's not an error. It's telling import cancel. So it is because it's already exists. So second time again, Rio execute, it will not create. So write replace. Yes. Yes. So when you are importing an Excel workbook and you want to read a specific worksheet, you can also provide sheet equal to <clears throat> statement and give the sheet name. So only that sheet name can be imported. Okay. So try this code, simply copy this. I'll give this code, but change the path, okay? So you change the path. Try it out. Change the path with your respective system. So what is the path for us for your class data? So I go into my data folder. I have a class XLS file. I go to its properties. I take this path and I paste it. So it's replaced. So it's telling sheet is class test. So let's execute. So only that class sheet is read because if you have observed this sheet of class, see, I open this in external file. I have a class, class birth date, class teachers and class test as four worksheets. So I am specifically asking it to read only class test. Hence, I give this option or a statement sheet equal to I write class test. So only that class test data is read. Got it now, everyone? Yes, Ashwin. Yes, Ashwin. So yes. you we know in our Excel sheet, we have multiple sheets or Excel workbook. So if you want to specifically read only specific worksheet, you can write this statement sheet equal to and give that sheet name. Fine? All right. Okay, so there is a discussion. What is the difference between using a XLSX libname engine and proc import to read Excel data in SAS program? So major difference with the current explanation which we have seen with sheet equal to and libname. What is the major difference you find? Can anyone quickly revise? Yes. Yes, people. Am I audible? Yeah, uh, Excel file in lib in library reference. It's not. No, 
with mm -hmm. libname if you remember the whole workbook is been read and every individual worksheet is treated within the library as a data file mm -hmm. or you call it as a table but when you are importing an individual worksheet gets imported at one time correct yes. and it is directly creating a data set whereas with libname it's still an external engine right everyone yes 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 so beyond saas programming one you can always create libraries that are assigned automatically for that you can read this external extra reading for saas access or you can also read how you can read a raw file into an saas so this is all about your lesson 2 and this is the end of the chapter so exercise i leave to you as a self study so in case if you observe this pdf book you will find the exercise has been provided so see here you have exercise on or practice on page 2-31 level 1 so you can read the statements and work according to this exercise please work as a self study for level 2 level 1 and level 3 as well and we can discuss this in our next class all fine everyone so you can do yes. all the demonstrations activities as a self study for lesson 2 along with exercise all right yes yeah. so any doubts any questions till now yeah uh, ashwini uh, i save my data right uh, so uh, that csv file it's why it's not opening it's just opening it in different format no 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 what you are saving it just share your screen yeah oh uh, that uh... csv file which file it's monica it's a tab file tab yeah tab no, will never open it? it's storm damage storm damage See, it's okay. showing it csv before this yeah. before oh, this okay. before this before this yeah, before this yeah i open it see it will not open because it's a no, it's a csv file close this window give me access please give me access okay okay so see it's telling it's dat file but before this it's telling it's an excel file here and it's a csv file see yeah so csv but, uh, files always open into excel but if you want to open it into sorry a notepad and it should yeah, be yeah so what you have to do right? is select this right yeah. click okay so it has an option open with so open with you can use another app so here you can always select the app so you have notepad okay okay oh, okay thank you got it yeah fine so this is how it opens thank all you. right so you can stop sharing okay so any doubts any questions anyone no should no as if now but i would ask you to please revise the topics until and unless you do not practice you do not revise you won't be able to clear the concepts okay because Correct. as and though when you start working with uh, our next chapters higher concepts will be coming up so you need to be thorough with your basics then only you will be able to follow your higher concepts and accordingly our speed will get on increasing okay anamika and jagruti of yes. course padma monica you need to focus on revising practicing so see to it you take up from your daily routine some time at least minimum 1 hour to revise the topics and don't worry you will you will you will pick up with the space but only initially from your end you need to give up give into a lot of time for revision all right Yeah. So, yeah. so videos are always there for you to help you out of course in case the videos are not been posted in time you know your pdf book is the best handbook for you to read it and revise the topics it's a yeah. perfect guide for you all right yeah. yes okay actually i just have a question yeah uh, and all the options will be same for windowing and environment too right same 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 okay 
So you have installed with you currently 9.4 version? Yeah, I have it. Okay. So can you just share your screen? I can show that uh, version to other uh, participants also. Yes, thank you, Padma. So people see it's this. This is the uh, windowing environment 9.4 application. So see at the bottom you have editor window, log window, output window. Same thing. So Padma, can you just give me the remote access? Yeah, thank you. So see this is editor. This is log. This is output window. Okay. So currently it's not having any code written here. So if you want, you can maximize this code at the left hand side, you have libraries here. So by default, if you open this, you'll find apart from SAS help and work. These are other libraries which are same as SAS studios. So SAS help, if you try to open this library, so you have all this libraries data files, same as we have in our studio. See all this. So you'll have cars also. Okay, fine. So this is all our data files. So if you want to go back, you can always click here. So uh, Padma, where is your um, uh, external other data files which I have given you have saved? Just give me the path. Okay, I'll just tell you lib name. I write PG one. Okay, so where is the folder Padma? Where is the folder on external drive? Yeah, Padma. Am I audible, Padma? Yes. Yeah. So <clears throat> can you just tell me that just minimize this and tell me where is the folder where you have saved all the data files on your external drive? Padma, can you just minimize this, please? Okay, leave it. Padma, it's okay, fine, no problem. <coughs> so apart from this, one can also write a program. For example, now it's it's got hang or what, Padma? Am I audible? Yes, yes Ashwini. But why it's not moving? In edit window. Okay, come to edit window, Padma, or come to file. Come to this file option. Ashwini, I'll, I'll start sharing again. Uh, something has happened, so I was unable to hear you. Okay, okay. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, it's on my uh, uh, desktop with the name SAS Ashwini. You can find the path there. Okay, I'll just minimize this. on the right hand side one sec this is not getting minimized it's okay no problem it's not working it's getting hanged okay do one thing on this editor window just enter and write proc proc print 
enter write proc print data equal to sas help sas help it's not sas dot help it's a library see yeah. left hand side it's a library yeah. now open this library sas help yeah now scroll down a bit do you have cars table yes see this cars so write sas yeah. help dot cars in your editor window semicolon run and submit this select this and select that running man see it's beside the cross yeah, yeah. so print means it will simply list all the rows and columns so you have an error unrecognized form of run so you did not select run that's why it's giving you an error so run see you're not selected along with semicolon yes one secreted process okay so again there is an error what it's telling i'm asking a remote access okay okay did you accept that remote access yeah i did okay so i'm here so proc print data is equal to sasal dot cars So submit selected portion. So it's done. See, this is the log. So if you want to check the log in full screen, you can view it. So this is what it's doing. So see in result at the left hand side, you see the result window, and the result window comes as a separate window like this. It's a SAS result window in this output. Okay. So this is how the output comes in this SAS nine point four. So when I go back into edit and if I want to create my library, so Padma, just give me the path for my data folder here in case if you can give it. Okay. Ashwini, I'm doing it. So yeah, 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 do it. Yeah. Sorry. Please, please paste the path. Ma'am, uh, my operating system is different, like not Windows. We are working on Studio, right? SAS Studio. So, Sri Padma, she is already having since nine point four. So, I'm just trying you this, trying to show you this interface. That's it. Okay. Actually, that is the path. Yeah, but where is the data? In which path? give the data folder also oh, okay because that is the data folder where you have the data sets right for yeah. sas do one thing padma just minimize uh -huh. this minimize this software minimize the software ha okay. show me the location of your path go to that location yeah it's on the desktop it's uh, you, sh you show me because i cannot see it i cannot do it because when i'm trying to do it it's not working okay so it's space pg come to your desktop show me the desktop i'm on the desktop i cannot see i could see only sas 9.4 okay just let me minimize this okay yeah can you see it now no um i'll stop sharing and i'll start sharing no no again. what are you sharing are you sharing only a specific software or it there comes no, a i'm sharing what you hold desktop yeah. i'm on the desktop and i'm sharing uh, showing you the path no 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 what i'm trying to tell you is i could see only your sas software because when you are sharing the screen the screen sharing option comes that do you want to share only a specific software or the whole desktop so stop sharing and reshare with the option to share the whole desktop got it so it yeah, is yeah. restricting me to talking. see only the software or for us so people we are going to work into sas studio so this is where padma already has this windowing environment i'm just trying to show you how this environment looks 
okay so it will be the same sas studio which we all will be working Okay. Actually, I can just share only uh, the screen. Uh, like I don't see the option to share the whole thing. Okay, so it is it is not giving you option to share um, either like which software or a tool you need to share or a whole screen only it comes. It's okay then, no problem. Padma. Okay. Fine. Yeah. No problem. But I just wanted to show it's okay, Padma. So I hope you okay. people have got the glimpse of SAS 9, I mean, doing environment 9.4, how it looks. Yes. Okay, that's yeah. it. So it's not much difference. It's only this is our cloud application, which we are working currently. And that is the desktop installation. Okay. Um, okay, it's a I'll licensed see. copy. Okay. okay, so this is a cloud application. Same thing we have seen code, log, result window, editors windows. At the left hand side, we get all the information like this, the same thing there, but only the difference is there you have the path which is for your folders, you can access from your desktop or any drive. Here we are uploading into cloud application, that's it. And you give the path from the cloud, not much difference. Okay. All right? Yeah. Ashwini. Yeah. 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 Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> No, uh, I I just have one question on that uh, window application. We can import the file from C. Same drive thing. Drive. Yes, yes. yes. Right. So your only okay. the path will be different. That's what I'm trying. Data to. file. Okay. Yes. Yes. It will be C colon or D colon yeah. whatever you have. So, so we don't have to upload there, right? In that no. Uh, window app. No. No. Okay. No. On just cloud application, we have to upload. It. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Jagruti, go ahead. Yeah, I was asking in a real time we work on cloud or we have a licensed copy that we will work it depends like... on which organization because most of the people are now moving into sas studio but there are organizations who are using uh windowing environment all as well so now you have not a difference there i showed you only the differences about path correct that's it rest everything is same the features would be same only the way of appearance is different. So do you get acquainted with it slowly once you start working? Basic yeah. concepts of writing programs, all the same. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Okay, people. So with this, we'll stop our day. Thanks for attending the session. Would request you to please, please revise. All Certainly. right. Yes. Thank Take you. care. Good night. Bye. Good night. Please Bye. Bye. Over to it attend the resume preparation sessions okay. sure okay sure. so we'll be okay. meeting on thursday night correct for you people correct night yeah, yeah. or afternoon yeah. no for our yeah. class yeah for our class yes yes all right mm -hmm. so see you bye take care bye take yeah. care bye, bye. bye.